Welcome to an educational video presented by the Pastiche Distance Learning Program. Lecture title Why Say No to Emulsifiers? Hello, my name is Florence, and I am your tutor for today. This lecture is the first of our cosmetic chemistry specialty classes and is based on the principles of cornea therapy. What is cornea therapy? Cornea therapy is an innovative and progressive methodology of thinking, with core principles of the correction and restoration of the stratum corneum and barrier defense systems, while keeping the epidermis intact at all times. Cornea therapy cosmetic chemistry is the care of the stratum corneum using topical therapies with products that mimic skin structure and function. For skin care to be considered cornea therapy based, it must be made from true dermatological cosmetics following cornea therapeutic principles, and should be free from the many conventional and commonly used chemicals found in the domestic retail market today. The principles of cornea therapy establish that the formulations applied to treat the skin must be of a particular integrity of the composition. They are characterized by the absence of active compounds, such as active agent cocktails made with a multitude of components. Emulsifiers, or consistency agents that require stabilization with antioxidants, emulsifiers that cannot be degraded in the skin, and emulsifiers that are incompatible with the skin barrier or do not correspond to the physiology of the skin. True cornea therapy formulations will also be free of surface active substances that impart a disordered skin barrier and preservatives with allergenic potential. They are free from strong chelating agents, free from ingredients that interfere with the sensitivity pain receptors of the skin, and free from perfumes and fragrance and preservatives. Finally they must be created manufactured and packaged in aseptic laboratories. Let us begin by understanding what is in a facial cream. Cosmetic labels show ingredients listed in order of quantity in the overall formula, the first being the predominant ingredient, the last being the least. Where the active ingredients are positioned in the list gives you some indication of the percentage in the formula, but keep in mind that some actives can often only be used in small quantities to retain their positive effect and not become oxidizing. A good formulation based on cornea therapy principles should mimic skin structure and function, and skin barrier defense systems. Benefits should slow transepidermal water loss be emollient, saturating, antioxidant, restorative, vitamin replacing, repairing, supporting of enzyme activity, and have balanced pH. Emulsions are one of the most common forms of cosmetic products. You will find them as part of skin lotions, makeup, and even hair products. By donation, an emulsion is a dispersion of two or more immiscible, normally incapable of being mixed, materials. Where one phase, also known as the internal or dispersed phase, is dispersed in the continuous or external phase by a substance called an emulsifier. Simple cosmetic emulsions are classified as Oil and water emulsion a low volume of oil is dispersed into a large volume of water. Water in oil emulsion. The low volume of water is dispersed into a large volume of oil. Water in silicone emulsion. Example, a hand cream or barrier cream that displays waterproof capabilities. Multiple emulsions such as oil in water and oil are also possible. Oil free. These include solutions and gels. Water-free. These newer creams are known as oleogels, 
are becoming popular for the barrier disordered skin. Oil and water emulsions is usually the most common in formulations due to lower production cost, ease of application and light texture. A moisturizing cream is a mixture of oil and water substances, and referred to as oil and water based cream or emulsion. A small amount of oil into a large amount of water. To ensure that the final product is water based. The amount of water added to the mixture should be somewhat greater than the amount of oil-soluble substance added, so that mixing produces an aqueous phase with small amounts of oil dispersed throughout. Under normal circumstances, oil and water cannot be mixed without a substance that blends the two phases. This is when emulsifiers are used, with the objective of obtaining a stable mixture that lasts and does not split back into the two original phases. Water and oil emulsions are heavier weighted creams, what used to be called night creams. A small amount of water dispersed into a large amount of oil. The choice of emulsifier affects the ratio of water to oil that can be mixed and remain in one phase. Some emulsifiers can bond with more oil molecules than others, meaning that more oil can dissolve in a given amount of water. Most emulsifiers can be considered surface active agents. Surfactants sort insides of the same properties. This property means that they can reduce the surface tension of water, which means that they float within the interfaces between aqueous and oily phases and thus form links, the essential precondition for emulsifiers, and an emulsion is created. What makes an emulsifier surface active is related to the size of the hydrophilic portion of a molecule, as compared to the size of the lipophilic portion. Surfactants and emulsifiers have a surface active ions that are either positively or negatively charged. Alternatively, contains no charge or have a dual charge as seen in amphoteric surfactants. The ionic charge is the key when classifying surfactants and emulsifiers, as the properties differ according to their ionic charge and the fatty acid that makes up the oil-soluble portion of the surface active agent. When used to combine the water and oil phases of cream, surface active agents are called emulsifiers. When used for foaming skin cleansing products, Surface active agents are referred to as tensides or surfactants. In the personal care industry these chemicals can have many functions. Emulsifiers, for creams and lotions. Foaming agents, for facial and body cleansers. Detergents, for washing clothes and other domestic cleaners. Conditioning agents in skin or hair care products. Solubilizers, for perfumes and flavors. And as wetting agents, as used in perming solutions. Or solvents used in the nail tech or fragrance industries. We shall now look at surface active agents as a surfactant and how they play a role as a skin cleanser. You have just learned that what makes a surfactant surface active is the hydrophilic water-loving head and the lipophilic oil-loving tail of a molecule. Hydrophilic head is attracted to water-soluble dirt, the hydrophobic tail is attracted to skin oils and oil-soluble dirt. These loaded molecules will be rinsed away with water. Individual surfactants have specific properties such as the ability to create foam like an ionic surfactants do, or leave behind a pleasant sensation on the skin such as the dual charged amphoteric surfactants. Therefore, most cleansing products consist of a mixture of surfactants. Negatively charged and ionic surfactants are the most commonly used cosmetic emulsifiers because they are cheap and stable.
This emulsifier is the most widely used type of surfactant for laundering, dishwashing liquids, and shampoos because of its excellent cleaning properties and high foaming potential. Skin tolerance of these substances may vary. An ionic short-chain combination such as laurel sulfates and also laurel ether sulfates may cause skin irritations. These combinations are widely used components of the food industry, cleaning agents, lubricants, and color cosmetics. What's wrong with emulsifiers? They seem to play an important role in cosmetic formulations. The use of surfactants and emulsifiers is largely unregulated and considered an easy and inexpensive way of combining the oil and water phases of an emulsion. The toxic properties of the surfactants vary by type, and cationic tend to be more irritating than anionic surfactants and anionic more irritating than non-ionic. Amphoteric surfactants maintain their compatibility with all other types of surfactants over a wide pH range and are thought to be milder than traditional primary surfactants. Often being incorporated in formulations to mitigate the effects of harsher primary surfactants. However, this blending of surfactants does not always negate the irritant factor of the anionic or cationic surfactant. Emulsifiers and surfactants have been found to be higher irritants than fragrance or preservatives because emulsifiers do not lose their emulsifying properties in the skin. The lasting emulsifying capacity of the emulsifiers penetrated into the skin causes an increased transport of skin known protective substances such as the multilamina lipid structure out of the skin, especially when the skin comes in contact with water. It is commonly called the washout effect. This causes a modification of the stratum corneum multilamellar lipid structure, and barrier defense of the stratum corneum. The lipid lamella phase being primarily responsible for slowing transepidermal water loss. The skin will exhibit changes in appearance when there is deterioration in these important skin barrier defense systems. The negative visual appearance may be in the area of application of air leading cause such as foaming cleanser, dishwashing liquid, allergens or pathogens. For this reason, conventional creams, soaps, and cleansers are not tolerated by consumers with barrier disorder skin problems such as atopic dermatitis and psoriasis. A combination of weakened skin and chemicals will very often aggravate atopic dermatitis or create inflammation that may present as localized heat, itchiness, and redness. Many creams aggravate a skin that is compromised because of loss of skin barrier defense, and consequently there is a growing market for cream substitutes for skins that need an artificial skin barrier defense without the risk of side effects that more conventional creams may cause. The answer is dermamembrane structure creams. DMS creams. These creams have formulations that do not contain conventional emulsifiers. Instead they contain physiological lipids that mirror the essential lipid component of the skin such as ceramides, phospholipids, essential fatty acids, and hydrated phosphatide and choline. A long time has been spent on researching bases that are more compatible with the physiological properties of the skin than the conventional oil and water, or water and oil based emulsions. And from the liposome and nanoparticles technologies, this concept was born. This approach avoids conventional additives like emulsifiers, perfumes, mineral oils, and silicones. The most important components of the cornea sites contributing towards intercellular cohesion are the multilamellar lipids and corneodesmosomes. 
the multilamely lipid phase being primarily responsible for slowing transepidermal water loss. Dermamembrane based creams have a physical structure similar to the skin's essential lipid barrier layers. Their chemical composition is adapted to the skin's physiology and is emulsifier free. Instead of emulsifiers these dermamembrane creams contain membrane components with a physical structure comparable to the barrier layers of the skin. The creams can be used for skin care and protection, but also for dermatological preparations. Similar to emulsions DMS creams may have a variety of different compositions as to quality and quantity. Further systems have gained acceptance in which membrane-forming substances like ceramides and phosphatidylcholine act as links between water and oils. These systems excel by their double membranes that can be found in the form of cell membranes and the multilamidolipid barrier layers of the stratum corneum. There is a big surge toward dermamembrane structure creams, DMS creams, that have a physical structure similar to the skin's buried defense layers. With a chemical composition similar to skin physiology, and is emulsifier free, these creams are becoming popular as a vehicle or base for modern skin care dermatological preparations and topically applied medications. However, because of the technology and knowledge required in creating dermamembrane structure creams, the developers of domestic retail market products are unlikely to offer these advanced type of creams. Ensuring they remain in the realms of dermatological and skin treatment therapy skin care for some time to come. A good formulation should be able to restore and maintain skin barrier function. All preventative treatment should aim to maintain the skin barrier in its best possible natural and intact condition. This type of treatment can only be achieved with external agents that can repair the natural barrier and not impair the regeneration from within. So it is obvious to use agents similar to those the body uses itself. Skin diagnostic measurement shows that the transepidermal water loss of disordered skin decreases significantly, and skin essential lipids and hydration levels increase after application of DMS-based creams. If we continue to use the linking product composition to skin structure and function model, then by looking at the skin barrier multilamina lipid structure and comparing it to the formulation of the dermamembrane structure cream, we see that it mimics the multilamina lipid structure and skin essential lipids. This lecture was dedicated to the advancement of scientific research in the realm of corneotherapy and related sciences. We invite you to visit the International Association for Applied Corneotherapy web page for further education. There are many specialist subject distance learning classes available from pastichetraining.com, and many articles to be read at beautymagonline.com. In addition there are the wonderful books and educational posters available from virtualbeauty.co.nz. I look forward to seeing you in my virtual classroom again very soon. Goodbye for now.